Blessed Margaret of Castello. To be honest, she's one of my favourite Catholics to have ever lived. Born to parents that did not love her. She was blind, had severe curvature of the spine, was a dwarf, and also had her left leg shorter than her right leg. In the eyes of the world, she was pitiful. In the eyes of Jesus, she was a holy child of God whom he had an amazing plan for. This is the story of Blessed Margaret of Castello. She was born in Perugia, Italy in 2087 to the noble family of Parisio and Emilia in the Matola castle. Now this noble family, as soon as they found out that they were having a child, they planned on throwing a massive party and celebration. They thought the child was going to be born a boy and end up growing up like his dad. To their horror, their child was a girl. And worse, in their eyes, she was blind, a dwarf, with a number of other impediments. Her parents, who did not want to damage their reputation, kept the girl hidden from everyone else until about the age of six, only allowing her in certain areas of the castle. Until the day she was almost discovered around that age of six by some of her parents' visitors, who saw this lonely child roaming around the castle. They were about to ask who she was and who her parents were before the maid stepped in. Her parents found out about this ordeal and they now thought it was too risky to allow her about a small area of the castle and they then imprisoned her for about a decade in a room attached to the residence's chapel. So they knew how much Margaret loved church and the blessed sacraments so that was their excuse to lock the freak up. But unlike her parents who not only hated their daughter but despised her, her parents chaplain showed an interest in Margaret. He noticed how smart Margaret was when it came to the faith. Margaret knew that her sufferings brought her closer to Jesus because that was his life. He went through the worst possible suffering when it came to Calvary. Not only this, but Margaret still loved her parents because they took care of her uh, and they made sure she had enough food and water to live. She was very grateful for that. Now, some people around the town knew of this blind dwarf girl who was kept in these atrocious conditions, but they were too afraid to say anything for fear of what her father, Parisio, might do to them. He was known as being rather violent and hot-tempered. So Margaret was kept in this prison environment for around 10 years. Now, there came a time when Margaret got a bit older, around 16 to 20 years, when there were rumours of miracles being performed at a Franciscan church in a nearby town called Castello. Margaret's parents' eyes lit up. Who knows, maybe they will be able to cure their blind freak of a girl, and they will never have to worry about their reputation again. So, they took Margaret to this church in another town, and they told their daughter to pray as hard as she could. They then left her there for the day praying. Nearing the end of the day, they came back and they peered round at their blind daughter, hoping she was cured. What? She was not healed. No, she would never be healed. At that moment that they saw that the Lord had not cured their daughter, they abandoned Margaret and they fled back to their hometown. So now the end of the day had come and the friar had come round to close the church. He found Margaret praying. Come on, little girl, we're closing up now. Oh, it's closing time, Margaret said. My parents should be here as well. The friar replied, little girl, you're the only one in the church. The friar then left Margaret waiting outside. But it was starting to get cold now, and Margaret was still waiting for her parents. Because, of course, they did not tell her that they would abandon her. Surely they'll be here soon, Margaret thought, as she was waiting by the pole while it was snowing. Never did the thought come across her mind that her parents could ever abandon her. Only later did she find out that they had done just that. She was now on her own. But instead of hating her parents or getting angry, she thought, how lucky I am that they took care of me for as long as they did. They fed me and they kept me alive. And yes, it's about time that I stopped being so lazy and I took care of myself. You know, Margaret knew that the pathway to Jesus was through suffering. 
Never before had she felt so close to God. As time passed on, the people of Castello began to notice Margaret. How holy she is praying all the time. Every time we see her, she has a smile on her face asking how we are. How can this be when she has such deformities? So after living on the streets for a while, she eventually got accepted into a convent. However, the nuns there had become accustomed to living a quite comfortable life, not going by the original rules of the convent. Margaret, only wanting to please God, decided that she must stick to the original rules because that was what God wanted. So she made sure that in silent times that she actually kept silent and she never accepted outside gifts from anyone. The nuns, they did not like this because it made them look bad. So they kicked out Margaret onto the streets again. It was at this point where she was tempted by the devil. It was as if the devil knew this was his last opportunity to get this holy girl. Margaret thought, maybe I should just obey God a little less so I can get back this love from the nuns and stay there once more. This love that I was missing from my parents my whole life. A love that I never got. But then she thought back to the years where she was imprisoned in that little room where she would meditate on the life and sufferings of Jesus. Jesus went through the worst suffering possible and she saw this as a beautiful opportunity to get close to Christ. Again, she did not hate the nuns for this. Instead, she left feeling grateful for the nuns for allowing her to stay at the convent even when she did not behave exactly like them. After a while longer on the streets, she became known to the friars from the Dominicans. Margaret was admitted to the local chapter and spent the rest of her life at this religious order. There she visited the poorest of the poor, the most unwanted. She could be seen limping throughout town, going to the sick and the dying. Margaret knew that the pathway to Christ was through suffering, so she would also take on extra mortification, like waking up at 12 p.m. and not sleeping for those hours every night. And she prayed instead. She fasted four days of the week, and on Fridays she only took a little bread and water. Also, in addition to the prescripted prayers, Margaret recited all 150 psalms and two religious offices. Because of Margaret's extraordinary love for the poor, her daily penance, her suffering for the love of the world, she grew extremely close to God. This closeness to God helped her perform a couple of miracles in her later life, including elevating whilst in prayer. If there ever was a forgotten saint, it would be Blessed Margaret of Castello, who I personally believe is in heaven. She was forgotten as a child, unloved, in fact, actually hated by her parents. But instead of doing the same, she did the opposite. Loving the least, the last, but most importantly, loving God. Mm -hmm.